It is no doubt that university, especially in first year, can seem a bit strange. There's so many assignments that you have to do, there's so many new people to meet, you know, the university is way bigger compared to school. At least this is how I felt when starting off things. But right now I'm in year two studying my electrical engineering degree at UCL and there are a lot of things that I learned in year one. And so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you tips and advice that I wish I knew when starting off university. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first tip is to be prepared. This means get your uni essentials covered. Pens, pencils, ruler, calculator if needed. An iPad and a laptop is also something that's very, very cool to bring if you already have one. Pretty much every single uni essential you need for your course. You might not wanna leave everything you have at home because there might be situations where you might wanna stay on campus and just stay in a library and study in a library and complete all your assignments on campus. Try and get into the habit of packing your bag every single time you have a lecture. And I know this may sound obvious, but it's something that students often forget, especially when starting things out. I mean, we all saw Monsters University Sully, forget his pencil. You don't want to be that guy. So yeah, just make sure you bring everything you need. My next tip is not to worry about how little you know. What I mean by this is you're either stressing about how little you know about your course when starting off, or you're just not in the habit of just doing things independently, you know, working independently. The whole idea of just going into a whole new environment by yourself, don't worry because it takes time to get used to. I recommend using your first year to help you transition yourself into the university lifestyle, if you know what I mean. For me, going into an engineering degree, I didn't know anything about engineering. I knew my maths, I knew my physics, but I just didn't understand electrical engineering. I haven't worked with Arduino boards before, I haven't worked with, I haven't worked with transistors or anything like that. But these are things that you learn in university. You don't go into uni having known everything. You go into uni to learn everything that makes sense but yeah later on in my first year I just started understanding things and I got used to my degree and I got used to the university lifestyle so yeah don't worry and don't stress if you're just starting out it's just something that takes time to get accustomed to my next tip is to join societies join the societies that appeal the most to you if you don't know what society is a society is pretty much a club or an activity that just a group of people attend to they usually run different events all around the central society name. So for instance, at university, there's a boxing society where people learn how to box. There's ACS, which is African Caribbean society, which mainly involves African and Caribbean people just doing events together, whether that's a ball, whether that's just hanging out together. There's also a film society where people who are interested in doing films, shooting films can go and they can just do that with them. Not only does this give you a chance to meet people outside of your course, but it also allows you to meet people who share common interests with you. This is something I definitely wish I did more in first year, you know, go to a lot more societies, ones that appealed to me. And there's so many cool events that societies do that you should get involved with. And who knows, one day you may even make your own society. My next tip is to make sure you keep a clear and aesthetically pleasing environment. This is mainly for people who benefit more from studying at home. What I found with a lot of people is they end up just using libraries and just studying there instead of just going home or going to their accommodation and then just studying in their bedrooms or their rooms. They end up just using the libraries and revising with friends. But I do recognize that not a lot of people like studying in libraries, myself included. Sometimes I love to just be in my own bedroom and then just listen to lo-fi beats and study using that. And also because I have a decently sized monitor, I just prefer using that rather than fighting for space in the library for one of these. What I mean by aesthetically pleasing is just good looking. So clear space, maybe include a desk plant, maybe include, include some posters in your room. When going into uni, I changed how my whole bedroom looked. Before my desk was just filled with a lot of stuff that I didn't need to fill it with. And having items that aren't necessary for revision can make it easier for you to be distracted. So I tried to utilize a clear space and try to have a minimalistic setup, which I probably will show you on screen what my desk looks like. I mean, it's literally right behind me as well. But, but yeah, just try and make your bedroom look nice. And I don't know if you can see in the background, but I also have some posters. I do an engineering degree and, and I tried to select posters that were relevant to my degree, but also not too, too boring, because come on, engineering. <laughs> so for instance, I tried to utilize patent art. So I have an Xbox controller 
and like and i have it in a type of way that looks as if you know someone was working on designing an xbox controller like how engineers design usually so i i don't know i just tried to make it as cool as that and i have miles morales there because miles morales is the goat obviously but yeah just try and be creative with things i mean i use pinterest to motivate me to know exactly what i want my room to look like so yeah an environment that's like minimalistic overall makes you more motivated to revise so definitely do that in this video i've been giving you advice to help ease your transition as a fresher i understand going into first year things can be difficult to understand but there is a website or app that can help you as a stem student transform your learning which brings us to the sponsor of this video Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to transform STEM students' way of learning. Their lessons are filled with hands-on problem solving to help you play with concepts. All proved to be six times more effective than watching your usual boring lecture videos. Their way of teaching helps you build on your critical thinking skills. By learning a bit every day makes it easier for you to stay consistent with your work and also prevents you from burning out or feeling overwhelmed. And Brilliant takes note of this by building on your real knowledge in just a few minutes each day. Brilliant can also be used and accessed in places as easy as your phone, meaning that there are fun lessons you can take in the library, in your house, on a bus, whenever you're free or wherever you're free. Brilliant has so many courses as well. There's even a course to do with Python. And this is brilliant for students looking to get familiar with Python, learn essential coding elements like for loops and variables, and also help you develop your mind to think like a programmer. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Kieran forward slash, or you can use the link in the description below. What is also sick as well is you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is crazy so any stem students out there go ahead and give it a try and hopefully this all helps with your university experience my next tip is to work on your cv from early this makes applying to places way easier especially if you have to apply for internships and why internships are very important is it helps you be employed as a student going to things like internships getting work experience all helps you increase your chances of getting employed straight after uni so even just creating a CV will mean that will make it easier for when you're getting more experience to just add it on the CV rather than having to create a whole new CV. <laughs> My next advice is all to do with dealing with imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when you doubt your skills, your talents, your accomplishments and feel as though your position at university is undeserved or as if you've hatched your way through the system or hatched your way through where you are right now. It's all a mental hurdle that can get in the way of your studies and there are ways of dealing with this. One way I'd recommend is to stop comparing yourselves to other students. What I've learned in first year is a lot of the times people will say, oh, I know this, I've got things figured out. Oh, this topic's very, very easy. And there are cases where they are lying. They're literally lying. They're not, they don't understand things. They haven't got things figured out. They're literally just saying that to put on a persona of like, everything's okay for my head. So imagine comparing yourself to people who will literally lie about that. It, will, it wouldn't make you feel good at all, <laughs> especially if you think they're telling the truth. I've also seen people in lecture rooms just ask, very intelligent questions you know questions that blew my mind like, and asking just very professional questions all of that made me feel imposter syndrome and when having this it just made me feel really unmotivated because i was just like at the end of the day like what's the actual point i don't feel like i should be here you know i feel like other people are just way better than me i'm just at the bottom of my class but i realized that i shouldn't compare myself to other people because there's also chances that other people are feeling the same way I am. The imposter syndrome I had mainly came from the fact that I'm doing engineering and people in my course have already had experiences with things like Arduino boards, things with nuclear boards, you know, just things with circuits in general and like knowing how to work with them, using breadboards, putting resistors, capacitors together. You know, people at the age of seven building really cool robots whilst at the age of seven I was playing Minecraft. And, you know, just things like that made me feel a sense of imposter syndrome but just know that you got into your position deserved so yeah please don't let your imposter syndrome bring you down my next advice is to research places that are around your uni 
This can be places to eat, places to chill in the park, um, places that you can walk, or maybe any train stations allowing you to go to different places. Or ask others around, oh, do you know any like really cool places to eat? Or do you know any local parks around that I can just walk and chill if I need any space or anything like that? Sometimes your university can be very isolated from city, but if you are living in a city uni, no places that are around. Last but not least, enjoy your degree. I recommend using first year just to help transition your life into university. Pretty sure for most unis, first year doesn't count a whole lot to your degree, but I'm not saying not to care about, you know, your degree at all, but just enjoy it. Just enjoy first year in general, meet new people, join more activities, develop skills or learn more skills that you can just use in life. Join a sport, join a hobby, and yeah, enjoy your first year. But yeah, that sums up everything. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have found this video useful, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the video. Obviously, like I just said. And please stay tuned for more videos coming out later. All the best with university. I hope it goes well. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Or you can DM me on Instagram. Stay safe, stay hydrated. And peace.